The material for underpinning project, digging a basement under house, is going to go up uh, a path to the left side. And I want to spend just a minute to show how 30 dump truck loads of material would be helpful over there. As long as I'm using the power buggy, I'm running up this plywood path here. I found some inch and three quarter thick uh, 21 ply plywood. That's like a sidewalk. Material scooting in there. I'm going to change into a mass excavation mode. This will be, uh, I'll use some swamp mats and run a tractor and uh, push a trailer or dump trailer back there. Hey, we're going up that hall road here. Because it's a power buggy, they don't have much for brakes. So the haul road right now is kept pretty much level. And that'll change when I use the tractor. It's got a dozer blade on it. You see in the distance his backyard. Uh, between here and the backyard, right where I'm standing, is a really nasty ravine full of uh, brush and crap. And he couldn't get any quality plantings in there. And he had no access to his uh, backyard. So this material here will be dozed down to make a... Uh, smooth ramp down to his backyard and then you can put some quality plantings in there. Another reason we're doing this, they backfilled his house. They didn't leave enough material there. You can see a lot of material that rolled away from the side of the house. All because the stuff keeps rolling into that steep ravine. Then the hillside goes back up on the other side. You can barely see it with all the vegetation but there's a uh, real nice trees and everything else in there. So the intent was to bury the crap, get his house backfilled again, get it ramped down. And that's only half of the equation. This is a side view of that hall road. Kind of exciting to drive the buggy down there. You see all the, all the big trees are staying in place. The whole road would be graded down to come down to a point it drops about eight feet where it goes in the woods on the other side to where I'm standing here. So it won't stay level like it is now. And then from where the ramp ends, I turned 180 degrees. This is the next problem. He has a real high wooden retaining wall that's pretty much rotten. If that gives away, uh, again, it'll be right down to footing for his house again. That hole in there is probably another 20 feet deep or more. So between them, that's where the 30 dump truck loads are going. This is how he has to get in and out of his backyard right now. He has to pretty much throw the lawnmower over the hill and walk next to it when he's going back up. So, that material is going to backfill this retaining wall. It's rotten. Leave the good trees, get rid of that brush and crap. And make a ramp from where I am standing here up to where it enters the woods on the street side. And properly backfill his house again where material washed away. We're getting deep enough in the hole now that we can swing that machine around. Up until now, doing all the work swinging, they call it uh, just a journal. We find the excavator loading it to a wheelbarrow sitting alongside of it. And the proper way to use this is to swing the whole house. I was swinging it off their journal here, just the front, keeping the house straight. Then I'll be swinging around the house, the center of the machine. The tracks will be widened out. There's a hydraulic uh, spreader on there to make it more stable. Next up is to take this fireplace footing out here, those uh, block that was put in just to support a fireplace above, which is not there anymore. I showed a concrete block foundation for a hearth is going to be removed down the crawl space. There used to be a fireplace where this bow bay and window seat is. And I knocked the fireplace down, took the hearth out, and then put this bow bay with the window seat in. So we don't need that uh, concrete block support anymore. 
The next step is to start replacing basement posts as they come to them. This is the first one. The job will be to put a shore on either side of that post at the same centers as the beam is set up for nine and a half feet centers. Take the post out, floor under it, the stone, clay, sand, put a new uh, three by three footing post pad underneath it and put an eight foot high post in and sequentially do them all. There's seven posts total. This is the next step of removing the columns underneath the basement beam. Put two shores in at whatever the original column space it was. That in the center is the original one. And the next step is to take that one out and underpin underneath it. Meaning, um, dig it out, put a new footing in, and put the new post in. Then take the shores out and then repeat it in the next one. Then I marked where the old post was and took it out. It's ready to dig now. I see some temporary shores back there. That's under a piano. Um, there's never been a house designed to accept a piano's weight. Imagine the weight of a car and an area the size of a crib. That's what a piano does. If it's in the middle of a span, it's all bad.